Hey guys, it's Susie Lee with Bella Lena Boutique. How are you? Happy Friday. Um, we are going to be making a, an art journal today um, from an old planner. And um, if you're just jumping on, say hello. Uh, make sure that I'm working here. Refresh my screen. And make sure that... Um, I feel like I have something on my face. I've been working up here. <laughs> I've got the camera a little bit closer because um, I'm going to be um, bringing it on down so y'all can see um, what I'm doing. Um, let's see here. Who is on tonight? Who's going to join me? Who, how many takers do I have here? Uh, let's see. See some eyeballs. I do. Hey, I want to show you some happy mail that I got today in the mail from... Um, one of my sweet darling followers, if she's on here tonight. Let's see. Hey, Lynn Perkins, how are you? Um, uh, I'm up a little close and personal today because I'm going to be bringing my camera down. Hey, sweetie. Hey, Della. Um, feeling a little under the weather today. I don't know. I've got something going on with my back. Ugh. Uh, that's old age thing. It's not working out for me. Um, anyway, hey, Nina, how are you? And Jolie's Creative Designs, how are you? Oh, thank you. These are some of my, these are some of my plunder jewelry that I got from my friend Fran Graves. And um, she used to sell it. And um, I, now I'm selling some retired stuff. So uh, anyway, I love this plunder. I love it. Um, I don't know if you've ever heard of it before, but it's a great type of jewelry. Um, they are still in business, but um, the ones that I sell are retired. <laughs> they, they no longer make them. So um, thank you very much. Uh, so here's the deal. Um, hey, Joanne. Hey, sweet Sybil. Now my peeps are popping. <laughs> How are you? How are you, Lucia? Nice to have you. I love plunder. It is the prettiest. I mean, it is just, this is plunder too. This is a piece of plunder. It's just a little smaller piece. Usually they're bigger and chunky but, um, or, and, or, um, flouncy, flirty, but, um, anyway, um, oh, Linda, you're sick. Oh, have a wonderful evening, sweetheart. I'm not feeling that well tonight either. My husband's been down. I don't know if he caught what Lena had. I don't know if Lena, what Lena had was catchy at Easter, but he's been down. He finally ate some broth. He hasn't been eating. He hasn't eaten a bite in two days. So, um, thank you, Lucia. Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> it's a Wally World special. Um, anyway, um, what it, is, is Debbie Henry on here by some chance? Um, I got a sweet happy mail. Um, just the sweetest thing uh, today. Just a, it kind of brightened my day, and um, I've been I've been kind of taking care of the hubs a little bit, and you know I I feel so bad for him because he's you know he's not a complainer or a whiner, so I know when he's sick it's bad. But look at this pretty card she sent with it. Isn't that pretty? I love this. You know, I could probably do some decoupage with this. I'm just saying. Make something or frame it. That would be really cute in a frame, wouldn't it? I love that. And then I would always remember my sweet friend. Happy mail, happy spring. Love and God bless Sister Debbie. Isn't that sweet? She sent me this too. I love this little bookmark. How firm a foundation, you saints of the Lord, is laid for your faith in his excellent word. What more can he say than to you he has said, to you who for refuge to Jesus have fled. Um, that's from Ripton's A Selection of Hymns from 1787. That's a hymn. Um, how firm a foundation. What, who was the guy? He's passed away. Um, I can't think of him right now. But if any of you know who he is, um, er, I can't think of his name. It'll come to me. About four o'clock. I'll give you guys a call. Anyway, this is uh, the back of it. So pretty, right? A little bookmark. And look what else she sent me. I'm going to put this over here so I don't, I don't want to mess it up. I'll put it here so I don't mess it up. Um, I'm trying to think of the guy's name. He was an old, um, been around for generations, preacher, teacher of the word, wonderful, J. Vernon McGee. Remember that? He still had, they still play and air his, um, his teachings. J. Vernon McGee, that's who it was. Anyway, that song was played on J. Vernon McGee's um, how firm a foundation. Anyway, that's who it was. If y'all know who he is. Anyways, she sent me this dish towel too. This, um, it's not a dish towel. What do you call this? I don't know what you call this, but it sure is big and it's huge and it's beautiful. But look at, I mean, I want to color it. 
I want to paint it and, and with some with some paints. It's so pretty, um, and maybe make a pillow out of it. But this is this is what's on this one. Um, it is another hymn, Great is Thy Faithfulness, O God my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Thomas O. Chisholm, 1923, that was written. Isn't that cool? Anyway, that little ditty, I learned a long many moons ago. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's on here. And I thought, wow, that would be really a cute thing to do with this um, dishcloth. I don't want to use it for dishes. It's too pretty, right? Anyway. So I wanted to share that with you, and if Debbie sees this on the replay, she can, um, I can tell her right here and now that I was blessed today by her sweet spring gift, and um, I just, I thought that was just the kindest, sweetest thing that she, that she did that for me. Anyway, so there's that. Um, let's see, where are we going to start today? I'm going to show you this. Um, I have an old planner here. Um, that I took all of the artwork out of because um, I just I just ripped all the artwork out because I'm going to use it for and I have it you know set aside for different projects and when I'm looking for something I thumb through it and see if there's anything I can use but look at all of this planner that can be used still for um, for what for something and I thought to myself what better than to do an art journal and I've got a couple things that I've that I've done already and I'll show you later but um but tonight I'm going to show you what you can do uh with one of these plants this I got from Hobby Lobby I got it from a song like at the end of the year and I used it for a little bit and then it was the end of the year <laughs> it was no longer useful so I like I said the artwork in it was absolutely beautiful I mean you can even see some of the little some of the little pretties that were in um some of the pages but um and it had beautiful um sayings and verses and things like that in it anyway hey Lorna <laughs> you love this top uh thank you um so anyways my spring top the one I wanted to sp feel springy even though it's sleeted again this morning I went oh no I'm over this weather so um Anyway, yeah, I'm, I'm sure you are too because you live in Melvindale. Um, anyway, what I'm going to do with this tonight is um, I'm going to, first of all, I'm going to move you all into the corner uh, over here. I can still see you. I can still see you. There we go. And I'm going to bring my camera, my tripod. I bought a new tripod today at the Dollar Tree. It was five dollars, and a USB cord. It's a little. It's not this one. It's a little one, and um, the the phone is actually over the the tri or over the ring light, and um, it's a really cool thing. And I thought I'm going to keep it downstairs for when I do, because whenever I do things in my kitchen or any other area of my home. Um, it's hard for me. And like when I did the other day, two stations when I was doing my um, embroidery and stuff, that was hard to, uh, because over there, there's no ring light. And so you have to disassemble this ring light, take it over there. And, and it's really a hassle. This is a little tiny tripod. And I thought I could set it up on something over there in the kitchen or wherever I am if I'm not at my desk. And so I purchased one and it works fabulously, just like this one does. And it was five dollars for each uh, for the little uh, USB port and that. So, um, if you're looking for a ring light, ladies, uh, Dollar Tree Plus had them. I was shocked. I went over there to get some Manila file folders for my husband because he's doing our taxes. So <laughs> he needed some file folders. Um, so, hey, Jackie Janush, how are you, my friend? Jackie is my daughter-in-law's mom. And uh, in case you, Jillian, you know, y'all know Jillian. So um, tell Jim I hope he feels better. He's really been out of it, Jackie, for two days. He's been... Lena was here for Easter and um, she came in with a blanket over her head and she really was sick. So I felt really badly, but I thought, I thought it was something else. 
I didn't think it was a virus or anything because I thought it was something she ate. I thought maybe she had food poisoning because she was in that much pain. Her stomach was killing her. Three days or two days later, Jim comes down with it. And I thought I was getting it and I shook it, but I got something going on with my back and in my hip. I don't know what it is. And it kind of radiates around. I, I need some cheese to go with my wine. <laughs> Sorry, ladies. I don't like to be a whiner, but my goodness, I almost didn't go live tonight, but I'm here. I said, you know what? Maybe if I start crafting, I'll just forget about it. I'll just forget about it. Anyway, so here we are. So here we are, and here we'll stay. Okay, so this is the page I'm going to be working on. It looks like this, but not for long. Not for long, kids. Um, where's my paint? Whoop. Almost knocked over my hot glue gun which really doesn't even need to be here because we're not using it tonight. So why fight with it? Go oh, bye-bye. I, <laughs> I need my paint, my fusion mineral paint. Now you can use any kind of paint that would cover, um, that would cover a journal. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to bring you all down like this. You don't need to see my face. You need to see what's going on. What's going on? And when I start to um, draw in that, I will, I will flip the camera so y'all can see. So what I'm just gonna do is put down a little bead of this Fusion Mineral Paint. And I'm gonna grab me a little slap it on brush, you know. You know the ones I mean, a slap it on brush. Are you? Hey. Yeah, uh, the, is she's in a lot of pain, your niece, Anna? Um, it's a bug of some sort and apparently, uh, thank you, sweet Doris. Um, I, I, um, I don't know what this is. It's something I never experienced before. I really don't know. So as you can see, and I'm going to keep these little flowers in here at the top, because why not? Because they're pretty, right? Got a little teal, my favorite color, my new favorite color. We're just going to get rid of the background. That's all we're going to do. You can do that, you know. It's going to be an art journal. We're going to start keeping an art journal. And every now and then, I'm going to do a little painting with you. Because why not? Because I can, right? And, you know, you might learn a little something along the way. And something maybe you can play with, you know, on your own. I'd like to inspire you to think out of the box and do some different things, you know. Um, you know, everybody's doing junk journals and stuff. And this could be a junk journal as well, if you wanted it to be. But, um you know, you could paint them up and, and you know, do, do junk journaling. That would be cute. But this is going to be an art journal. Have you ever heard of that? Have you ever heard of an art journal? I'm going to go back and forth, cross hatching, just to make sure I get a good coverage here, like that. And I'm going to leave it kind of, kind of a little bit of blue here at the top, just like that. All right, clean out my brush and dry that up real quick. And then we have a then we have a surface to work with. What's going on? Um, yeah, I don't know what what's going on with this virus. Uh, now this is the third time my granddaughter had it. So because she had, um, she had she thought what she had was food, food poisoning because she had had some bad sushi or something. But um, that was that was three times ago. Now, this is the third time, and I'm like, what's going on? But this was not, this was not what we thought. Some of the writing is showing up from behind, and that's okay. I'm okay with that. We're going to do some layering. We're going to do some drawing, some painting, um, just a little bit of everything. A little stenciling all of the things. It's got to be good and dry, though. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you all. Thank you, Della. You guys are so sweet. Thank you, Joanne. I mean, you know, um, I mean, we, we are uh, budding artists, right? So we're going we're gonna to work on our art skills a little bit. And I know a couple things I can teach you. <laughs> I can do a couple things that I can show you. So, um, okay, so what we have here next is um, a hymnal page. And um, I'm not going to use it like uh, you would normally use a hymnal page. I'm going to rip it. I'm just going to kind of, you know what I could do, too, is I could probably um, wet it with a brush. 
um, and you know, rip in between the the staff. <laughs> We're been, because it'll rip cleaner and nicer and feather nicer because these hymnal pages are are two shakes from rice paper for real because you know see how that kind of feathers a little bit yeah I kind of like that we're gonna do that we're gonna add a little texture and just um, something different we're gonna play with this for a minute just Debbie Henry Debbie Henry, you missed the beginning, sister, where I thanked you for that sweet, you have to go back and watch the replay, for that sweet, sweet, sweet happy mail you sent me. Oh, it made my day. It did. What a sweet thing. You are so sweet, girl. That, is, that, was, that just, made me, just made me smile ear to ear. I said, look at this. Jim... Chimbra, he's got, you know, he's got friends from North Carolina where we attend virtual church, uh, our, our church, Calvary Church, and um, he, he t attends Zoom meetings and all of that, and, you know, we always get something sweet from those people. They are the nicest people, and he brings it, and he goes, see, you got friends from North Carolina, too. I said, who sent me something? And I looked, and it was sweet Debbie Henry. How sweet is that? Now, I don't know if I'm going to need all five of these or not, but we'll see. We'll see. Um, if I don't use all five, then we'll save this for another project and another day. But it's got, um, you know, it's a hymn, it's a hymnal <laughs> uh, and it will fit nicely across here. Okay, let's do this. Okay, this is a journal. You're just jumping on that I'm going to make into an art journal. Take a little bit of Mod Podge here. And we're going to put that on. That makes you very, very happy. Oh, you are so sweet. You made my day. You really did. That was so sweet of you. Okay, so what I'm going to do. Whoa, that's a little bit much on the Mod Podge there, Susie girl. <laughs> I'm trying to keep that. I want to keep that little bit of purdy. <laughs> Just that little bit of pretty stuff right there. Oops. And I'll take it from the top here. Um, these are just some uh, hymnal page words. I don't know if I could take the margin off a little bit too. Why? Because why not, right? I'm going to put the hymnal page right about there. I'm going to leave some of that pretty blue on there because I like it. All right. That and just kind of piece it in. Add a little more Mod Podge. And we're going to layer, is what we're going to do. We're just going to layer these. Make sure it's laying down nice, though. Just like that. Go over it a little bit at the edge. Make sure it's all lying down nice. Okay, might as well just go over the whole rest of it, cover it, and put down what I can so we can move on. I want to show you tonight how to make a beautiful um, little piece of artwork, a kind of um, mixed media. Yeah, it doesn't look like we're going to fit the whole song on here, and that's fine. That's fine. This is just for, this is just for effect. Okay, so we're going to put this little piece aside for something else. It came out of an old hymnal that I purchased from somebody from the, I don't know how old it was. Well, it was pretty old. <laughs> Very old, actually. Okay, I just want to make sure it's down well. And it is. Okay. And I'm going to dry it up. Hey, sweet Sybil and sweet trees. Thank you, my dear. A little Walmart find. It was a Walmart clearance last year. Um, gotta love Walmart clearance. Almost as much as I love Hobby Lobby clearance, right? Not quite, but almost. <laughs> Not quite. Okay. 
So it's already looking kind of, um, what do you call, mixed media, right? This is going to be an art journal for those of you just jumping on. Hey, sweet Melinda. How are you? Is Kathy on here? Is Kathy Cortez on here? I didn't see her, but she might be. Hi, Levada. Um, and Judy Stocker. Wear a mask when I leave home. Why? <laughs> I'm not a mask wearer. <laughs> those, those things uh, wear down your immune system. I don't think I'm sick. I just think I hurt my back or something. I just, my back hurts. I don't get sick. I really don't. I mean, I got COVID twice, but I, 20 years, I haven't had a cold, sniffles, nothing other than COVID. COVID got me twice, I will say. But um, those masks, they just wear your immunity down. I don't wear them. I'm good. All right, so it's pretty dry, I would say. All right, kind of flips up a little bit, but that's okay because, you know, I mean, if I were to tear it out and uh, use it as a piece of artwork or something and frame it, you know, maybe I would iron it. <laughs> He would iron it to stay down, but uh, that's about it. Um, yeah, no masks for me. Okay, so this is what we're going to do. I'm going to pencil. I can find a good pencil here. This is a good pencil, I guess, but this is a better one. Yeah, I think. It doesn't matter. This is good. Um, I am going to show you how to draw a rose. We are going to draw and paint a rose. It's going to be over here and we're going to do some stenciling over here. And um, so um, there's different ways you can, can draw a rose. You can get really, really, and I've, I've drawn a couple of them here just to show you. You can get really, really intricate and do something like this. Okay. You can get really, really intricate and do something like this. Now, I just painted this earlier today just for you to see. Um, you can get real intricate and do some things like that. We're going to keep this kind of on the simple side. And that, um, remember how I always tell you, um, I tell you that drawing is nothing more than shapes. That's all it is, is shapes. So I'm going to prove that point to you, I hope, tonight. <laughs> I hope I'm going to show you that. Anyway, I need, in order to do that, I need to get my little magic wand here. And I need to flip us upside down. Woohoo! How about that? And then I'm going to flip us around this way so that you can see, I think, everything the way it's. Yep, there it is. Okay, cool beans. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a simpler, the simplest way I know how to draw a rose, okay? So you start with an oval, and I want the rose to be like kind of up here, coming down like this, like that, because I'm gonna do some stenciling over here, okay? So I'm gonna start this, this rose right about here, and you're gonna start with an oval. Can you see that? Let me bring it down a little bit more if I can. Ooh, I'm going to try. Can you see that little oval there that I drew? I think you can. I think you can. Okay, right there. There's your oval. Okay, from that oval, um, you're going to go around like this. And you're going to go around it with almost like a teardrop, if you will. And you're going to connect it down here like that. And like you're going to put one line and you're going to connect it. So you've got an oval. You've got a teardrop in one line, okay? Then you're going to go up to that teardrop, and you're going to bring it down. This is like one big petal. You're just going to bring it down and to the end of your teardrop, like that. Then you're going to go back up where you started this petal, and you're going to make another petal and bring it down to the other end of the teardrop like that. So basically what you're creating here is the center of your rose. Now um, I could probably do it, I could probably do it better where you could see it better. Um, 
a magic marker. Let's try that. Maybe you'll see it better with a magic marker. Okay, so here is the oval. Here is your teardrop. It's going to come down like this, down like that. And here's the line that connects. Okay, here's your, your first petal coming out down to the end of the teardrop. And here is your other one coming down. Now, is that starting to look a little rose-ish to you? I hope so. Okay, and from there, from there, we're going to go up about, oh, two-thirds of the way to, the, to this petal right here on the right. And we're going to bring it down like that. Then we're going to go about halfway to this petal, and we're going to bring it around, and we're go it's going to meet the bottom of this petal here, like that, okay? Then we're going to go up about two-thirds again, bring down another petal, like that. Starting to look rose-ish yet to y'all? Then we're going to go back all the way up to the top of this petal. And uh, let me think here a minute. Yep, we're going to bring it. I'm doing this with a marker, so I don't want to mess it up. Um, we're going to bring it out and around like that. We're going to come up here. We're going to bring out another petal all the way down like that. Now, here, there's like a little... Um, I don't know, I want to call it like a, it looks like a little swimming fish down here at the bottom. It kind of goes like this. It looks like a worm. You're going to draw a worm, okay? It's the shape of a worm. It goes like this, like that. And it comes back like that. Okay? Right there. at the. It looks like a little worm to me, like a little squiggly worm. It's a squiggle. This is all it is. It's not difficult at all, at all, at all. Okay? So that little squiggle there is part of the rose that the, that the petals are going to work their way around, okay? So you've got this big petal up here. you got your little squiggle down here. So you're going to go back up to this petal, and you're going to do another petal right here. And it's going to come out like this. And then you're going to do another big petal right here. It's going to kind of come out. And you can squiggle them a little bit because rose petals are not straight and perfect by any shape, uh, any any uh, stretch of the imagination. They are very, very squiggly. So you're going to go down to this. Speaking of squiggles, you're going to go down to the squiggle and you're going to bring it up around like this. And you're going to meet that point that you made here. There's another petal. Isn't that neat? Hello, Luann. How are you? Okay, so there's another petal. You see this rose coming to, to life here? Okay, so then what we're going to do is we're going to come over here. And we're going to make another petal. We go out, in, and out, and around like that. And we're going to connect it right down here like that. Pretty much looking like a rose, is it not? Seriously, y'all. Okay, so there's your rose. Um, now, from there, we're going to make some leaves. Uh, we're going to go up here. We're going to create a leaf like this. Just gonna, It almost looks like a parenthesis. You know, you can kind of go like that. And it comes to a point at the top. And you come down from the point, go out, and then back in. And put a center in it, just like that. There's your leaf. Okay? I like to make little... Um, type of small, smaller leaves like this, because if you look at a rose, you'll see like smaller leaves and kind of thorns and all kinds of things. Um, but um, I'll make a couple of those, but let's make the stem. Let's go ahead and create the stem all the way down like that. And from the stem, we're going to put some more leaves. We're going to make a leaf right about here. Come back down. And another one coming out from that leaf, like that, okay? 
and don't forget your little center um, part of your leaf. And then maybe up here, I'm gonna make a little tiny one, right about here. Like that. Okay, now these little guys here, um, I think I'll make another leaf here. And you can put your, I sound like uh, Bob Ross, you can put your leaf anywhere you want in your world. Um, anyway, uh, and maybe a couple little thorns coming out here, little, little tiny thorns, because they do have, we know, they have thorns, right? All right, like that. And there, my friends, Here's your rose. Ta-da. Ta-da. This is a ta-da moment, right? Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to take um, some paint and we are going to take some, um, let me see if I have all my paint brushes that I want to use here. Clean. <laughs> I think I do. Now, if you're doing this, you can do it you don't have to do it with a marker. You can do it with a pencil. Get yourself a gummy eraser. These are the bomb diggity. I love them because if you make a mistake, you know, just you can just erase it really, really easy. Um, when I do uh, when I do my ske sketching of any kind of drawings or any kind that I do, I always use my little gum eraser. Uh, you can get it at any art supply store or you know Hobby Lobby craft store. Keep it on hand. Um, okay, so here's the colors that we're going to be using. I'm going to be using some white acrylic paint. I'm using casement. You can use any kind of white um, acrylic paint you have. I'm using fusion mineral paint because what I do when I mix fusion mineral paint with these other colors is it adds pigment and it helps me to co for coverage wise. It's a it's a great um, way to co uh, for coverage. So uh, I'm going to be using a couple of greens here. I'm going to be using this um, fresh fern green from uh it's from folk art and i'm going to add a little bit of that to my palette um and a little bit of black everest green thank you sybil you're so sweet thank you my dear hey you know what might as well learn a little few things along the way right why not ta-da <laughs> Michelle, ta-da! A little bit of, um, this is um, burnt umber. Um, any burnt umber will do. Americana, that one is. You can use folk art or anything. This is just um, a little bit of uh, a red. Um, it's a, it's a um, what am I trying to say? It is a sparkly, it's called passion red or rouge, but it's got a little, it's got a little sparkle to it. It's almost like, it's almost a pink, Okay. It says it's red, but it's almost like a hot pink. And that's what we're going to use tonight, a little bit of that. And on top of that, we're going to use just a dab of this orange, pure orange by Folk Art. And we're going to just put that in the palette. And we're going to see what we can come up with here. Right? Why not? Okay. I love mixing colors. You guys know that. I love to take my colors and mix them around and come up with new colors and things like that. So, um... In the center of a rose, uh, typically, is your darkest color. So I'm going to take just a little bit of this red. And I'm going to take a little bit of this burnt umber, and I'm going to mix it in. Just a little bit. More red than bur burnt umber. Add a little bit more. We want it to be red, but darker. Darker red. See, kind of almost like a burgundy red. See how that turned like a burgundy? Um, that's what we're going to do. We're giving it the burgundy, the burgundy color. I'm just going to go in here and add around, and I'm not going to cover up the lines so much. I'm going to kind of leave them in there with my, this is a number uh, zero um, paintbrush from um, Essential Stencils. Okay. And I'm just going to go in there. I'm going to use my lines as my guide. Okay. The center is the darkest. Okay. Then I'm going to clean that little brush off just a little bit. I'm going to dry that up just a second. I'm 
and let that dry for a second because I'm going to go in and add some some other color to it. But um, I'm going to go in with the red and a little bit of white. I'm going to make a like a dark pink. This is going to be a little bit brighter, as you can see. Hey, Shelly, how are you? Make sure you're spreading the love, guys. Okay, so we're going to go in with this darker pink. And I kind of like the striation when, when red gets into it. I'm just going to let it go and do its thing. Um, get in there and paint. Melinda... If you if you drew this, um, you can get yourself a little jigsaw and cut it out. And make yourself do a big version of it, and you could do some beautiful door hangers or all kinds of things with this. So you could practice this. You know, go back and watch the replay. You can stop it and start it as much as you want. Right? Okay. And that's that's kind of cool. I like that. Um, I like that color. What I want to do to this center here is I want to add just a few little, I'm going to get in here with that white. I'm going to get in there and do um, just some highlights, just very lightly, like that. Give it a little, just a little swish, almost dry brush it. Like that. So small you can barely tell. Just a little bit. Kind of gives it. I mean, this is obviously an abstract rose, but it gives it more of a realistic look to me. Going back into my red, not changing anything. Going back into my red, and I'm going to add some of this red into the pink, like that. Okay, then I'm going to go back into that pink. Might even add a little orange to it, because why not, right? That would be pretty. Okay. Next petal, we're going to do this. Kind of a peachy color here. Came up, it looks like almost coral, doesn't it? And it's okay if your music notes show through. If you don't have music notes, you can go to the Dollar Tree, grab a Dollar Tree book, tear out a page, and use that. You know, just put, a, put some writing behind your, your artwork. Or you can stencil some writing or stamp. If you have stamps, you can stamp some writing on your book. And then just draw your pretty rose right over it. Draw it on paper first so you don't feel intimidated, you know. Draw it on paper first and then you'll, you know, you'll get confidence and you just start, you know, doing it on your, on your artwork. That's what you do. I'm going to get in here. Let's see. What do I want to add to this? I think I'm going to add a little bit of this, this red. And... I'm going to dry brush some red into that, some streaks of red. Darken it up just a little bit. Like that. Get some white. A little bit of highlights in there, because why not, right? We like that. And you don't have to add the highlights. I just think they're pretty. I like to, When I add them, I like to blend them a little bit. Okay, going down into the rows, um, we can get lighter as we go because, you know, the center of the rows is generally, like I said, um, the lightest area. So we can take the white and mix it in with that red. Make us a pretty pink. Like that. What do you guys think? Is this something you think you could do? Or play with at least at the very least um, get in there and play play with your colors mess around what's the worst that could happen you have to add more color to it or go over it with another color lighten it darken it whatever it looks so pretty when you do that because that, that was, that's what makes it look more realistic I think you can even do this when you're sick and you forget you're sick. True story. 
Okay, so yeah, you know, see, I didn't even stay in the lines there, for heaven's sakes. <laughs> I didn't even stay in the lines. It doesn't matter. You can still see that black going through enough. I'm gonna take a gold pen to it when I'm done. So we're gonna we're gonna zhuzh it up even more. So I'm not worried about that one little bit. Um okay, going back down. I'm gonna add some of this burgundy. I don't wanna waste that in with the orange. See what we come up with here. A little orange and burgundy. Come over here. Make a pretty little color, and we'll probably add some, some white to that later. Or maybe some pink. Yeah, I like that. That's pretty. Okay. Kind of like a mat. Oh, thank you for sprinkling. I appreciate that. Thank you, Shelly. All right. So, moving along, <clears throat> we're going to do the next petal here. Um... I'm gonna let this dry before I put any more of the uh, colors in, in there that I want. I'm just gonna get in here and add, I'm gonna lighten it up even further. I'm gonna make it really pretty light, light, almost a, a mauve pink here. And we're gonna get in here and just paint. Yeah, a little bit more white. I want it lighter, I want it really light. These outer petals are, are gonna be pretty and light and airy with maybe some white in them, even. Like that. Okay, I like that. It's getting lighter as we go down into the bottom of the rose. That has some white in it. It's pretty. Here's a little worm that we drew. <laughs> a little squiggly worm. <laughs> and um, also a little bit lighter. I'm going to get lighter at the bottom here. Okay, now all we have left is the leaves. So I'm going to dry this up so I can go in and add some highlights. And you can make your rose any color you want. You can make it purple for all I care. It'll be beautiful. You can make a, a pink or all red, gorgeous deep red. Um, whatever, whatever floats your boat. You can make it a yellow. You can make it any color you like. That's enough. Okay, so all I need to do now, I'm going to just kind of wipe my brush off a little bit. Notice I don't, I don't rinse it very much. I just kind of keep mixing my colors and going back in. So I'm gonna take some of this white. Almost uh, dry brushing it. And so I'm just gonna go in and add a little bit of very light um, highlights. Like that. There's a light source coming this way, so that's what we're going to do. Add a little light source like that, like that. Pretty. Being that's fusion mineral paint, that um, little bit of white goes a long way. Let's see. If you get too much, you can always shear it with your finger like I just did. Just get in there and finger paint a bit like that. Okay? Then you got a little bit more um, detail in your rose. Okay? All right. There's that. All right, now we're gonna do the leaves. These are always fun, right? Um, we've got two greens here. We've got the lighter green, the fern green, and the forest green. I'm gonna mix them. 
because I like that color. That's pretty. It's kind of a rose leaf color, if ever there was one. And what I like to do, if you ever see um, some roses with leaves, they actually have a little bit of red in them. So I like to add just a streak or two of red in my roses, or my leaves, um, just to give them some interest. Sometimes I just do it in the veining. Sometimes I do it in the leaf itself. But I'm leaving that little bit of veining that you can see the, the vein in the middle of it. I'm going to go in with that little bit of burgundy there. And I'm just going to touch like maybe the edge of the leaf here. And give it a little bit of that deep, that deep red along like that. Oops, <laughs> didn't mean to do that. Uh, faux pas, faux pas, no big, no big deal. Um, and then um, go on and do the other ones, do your other leaves. Um, I like to make these um, these little thorny, thorny leaves, <laughs> a little bit darker. Like that. You like the colors? Thank you, thank you, Sybil. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you so much. All right, and here's another little, another little thorny one here and here. Okay, get back in there and create, recreate. It doesn't have to be the exact green because there are no two leaves exactly alike, but you know, you want to get something similar in color. So we're going to try to recreate that green for this leaf. And if you're practicing your hand lettering, ladies, your hand lettering could go right at the top of this. You could write anything um, um, that you want up here, a scripture or um, part of a poem or something like that. Um, that would be kind of neat. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing over here that I did over there. But I think I'm going to put, I'm going to shear it just a little bit. Just make it a, kind of a hint of that burgundy going on in that leaf. Like that. Okay. Go back in, do the other leaf. I can still see where the veining is, so that's good. Like that. I'm not even going to clean my brush. If it needs a little bit of red, if it has a little bit of red in it, we're good. Even better. You need a smaller brush like these. Um, Essential stencil paint brushes are fabulous because they come in all different sizes and um, they're super for fine painting like this. And I am an essential stencil affiliate, so if you would like to get some of these brushes to play with, I recommend them very, very highly. They are probably the best paint brushes I've used. Um, I really enjoy working with them. Um, so. You can um, you can do my uh, link, go to my link tree uh, exclamation point link tree all small letters no caps and no spaces and it will take you there and you can see my essential stencil um, link there grabbing up some more burgundy here just gonna go down here to this tip here give it a little bit of um, red very little it's kind of kind of blending it at the at the tip. Blending in a little bit of red. Okay, like that. And I need it to be white, white. Thank you, Joanne. Thank you so much. You guys are so sweet. Thank you, Deborah. How are you? All right, and um, what we're going to do is I'm going to go back in with the white here, and I'm going to add just a little bit of, you know, shearing, um, um, like I did here, just a little highlights, just a little bit here. 
to the top, very light like a feather. I try to keep my hand moving like a little, like a little feather. And if I get too much, I go back in. And you can go even with your finger and shear it like that. That's what that's called. It's not blending, it's shearing. Okay, and then right here, just a little bit. Yeah, just a little bit of highlight here and there. <laughs> and here. And here. And here. There we go. I like that. How about you? Mm-hmm. All right. Got the leaves there done. And you can add any kind of color combination you want. If you want to put some yellow in your leaves or a little more orange in your leaves, you know, make this your own. Um, you know, make it make it the way you want it. It could be any color you want. All right, next I'm going to do the, the um, stem, and I'm going to use the darkest green on that. I'm going to go up here, and I'm just going to follow the yellow brick road. Go down here, bring it up very, very, very thin, just like that. Okay, and of course, we have those little thorns. Wouldn't be much of a rose without a thorn, right? Or two. Let's put another one in there, just for good measure. And maybe one up here. Okay, I'm liking it. It's a thorny rose. I used to work in a uh, in a florist, and they would they had this this little mechanism that you would take and just pull down on the stem, and it would remove all the thorns. I said that's a great invention. That's a great invention. Your thorns want to be pointy though at the end. They're not pointy. They're not thorns. They're they're budding leaves. <laughs> there we go. All right, guys. So there's the rose part. Isn't that pretty? Ain't she pretty? <laughs> All right. So what I want to do now, I want to dry it really well because I'm going to go over it and we're going to en enlighten it. We're going to give it a little pop of, thank you, Lisa, or Lise. Um, we're going to give it a pop of gold. And I have these markers I got from Amazon. They're called AY. A-I-Y-E, chrome marker. Can you see that there? That's what they're called. They look like that. And they are awesome. I love them. Um, they have two sides. They have a, a um, chiseled end and a pointy side. Um, and they don't smell like um, you're going to get asphyxiated from the fumes, like um, liquid gold. And yes, they are as as gold as liquid gold. Kind of like that. Um, what you need to do is you need to release the the gold by pressing down two or three times. Well, when you first get your tip, you're gonna press down a hundred times. <laughs> it's gonna take a long time to get that to flow through. But you want to make sure you shake it up really, really well. Get the liquid flowing through. And then you're ready to go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of just give it some highlights here. Um, going around the piece in the gold. And making sure that it's coming out, <laughs> first of all, like that. Because there's oils in this, too. If you don't shake it up good, all you're going to get is the oil. You're not going to get the pretty, the pretty gold um, that you want. I'm going to make the center gold like that. Just going to go around it and outline it. I'm leaving some of the black in as well, but um, I think this just kind of makes the whole thing pop and accentuates the piece with the gold. But you got to make sure that your paint is dry because you don't want to ruin your pen because it will. It'll ruin it. Just kind of scratching the surface along that black, the black line that we originally drew, like that. 
but you can see how it's coming to life streak by streak, right? And it doesn't have to be perfect. Gonna let some of the black show through and some of the gold. Cover up my little faux pas up there. And it goes well over this surface because part of it has been my podge. Like that. Isn't that pretty? Now, doesn't that look a little bit more, as I hold it up closer, you can see, hopefully, I don't know if you can see it or not. There we go. There you can see a little bit when I do that. Um, you can see that the gold kind of accentuates it. I'm going to do the same thing with the leaves. In fact, you don't want it to be perfect. Like that. Ta da. And you can see all the pretty gold metallic showing through. Isn't that pretty? I love that. So there's that part of it. You can fuss with it a little bit if you want. And then, oh, I didn't do the I didn't do the stem. Oh, I should put a little gold in that. Because why not, right? Because we can. Just a little hint. There we go. Just outline it. Pretty. All right. So now what we're going to do, I got some stencils over here uh, and different, I've got different ones over here. I, I, what I was going to do is do a little stencil right to the side here. Got to decide which one I want to use. I got a whole bunch of them. I know it's not this writing one. It's not, I'm not going to use that one. I used that one on the one on the page before. Um, these are really pretty little flourishes. So are these, these would be pretty if I put them up far enough. Uh, and so would this. Oh, I like this. I really like this. It will go over the leaf just a little bit, but I think that'll be really pretty right there. And then I could do another one partially going down there, like start it up high. Yeah, I kind of like that one. Uh, what else do I have over here? This is too big. This one is kind of, mm, you know, if I did it, I would do it like right over it. But I don't want to do that. These are strips. Kind of leaning toward that, though, I got to say. Those would work well. These little, these little flourishes would work well, wouldn't they? What do you think, ladies? I don't know. Kinda, I'm kind of leaning towards um, this one here. Right here. Kind of like that. I'm thinking this, those flourishes will take it right on down the side and it'll look really pretty. That's what we're going to do. And, of course, um, I'll have to just hold it really tight to get that little spot there. Um, but I think we can do this. I think we can do it. Thank you, Melinda. Yes, this one, I like this, don't you? It's just a little pretty flourish that'll go along the side and it'll just give it some interest. Now, here's the thing. You can do it with, um, you can do it with paste, wax paste. You can do it with paint. Um, I was going to do it with like a white paint. However, kind of thinking that um, a gold wax paste would be pretty too. Like, um, I've got this copper, kind of a copper color um, from Pentart, the wax, uh, antique paste, antique wax. This is antique wax. I got the wrong lid on here. I mixed them up. This, the gold is antique paste. 
right? And this is antique wax, but I really like it, this um, antique wax. Um, although the if it was white, white, it would show up. It would really pop, the white, white, wouldn't it? Hey, Brenda, how are you? Hey, Martha, you like the fullest one. The fullest one? What is the fullest one? This one? Or, or these? I don't know. I, I'm going to go with this. I'm going to go with this. And, I, and you know, here's the thing. I think I'm going to go with the white after I, after I brought out my paste and showed you all that. Um, I'm thinking. But you could, use, um, you could use a textured paste. You could use a ray stencil. You can put, like, um, um, spackling compound. You can use spackling compound straight up white. Or you can use spackling compound, let it dry, and go over it with the gold paste. Or you can um, use spackling compound and color it. You know, color it any color you would like. So, uh, but with this one, I'm going to use just my regular old white um, paint. My white casement paint doesn't take much because um, I'm going to get myself a stencil brush from none other than, you guessed it, essential stencil. I'll just clean these. I did, <laughs> I did use some gold um, wax earlier on that one that I did. Um, but what I'm going to do, get in there, get my brush all goobered up. Wax on, wax off, right? And how we go? And get some white paint in there, really good. And get to pouncing. Okay, we're gonna get it up here. I want to put it up a little bit high. Um, it's gonna cover up a little bit of that leaf. I don't have a problem with that at all. I just want to make sure. Okay, I think we got it. Bye, George. I'm gonna start from the edge over here and start pouncing. Pouncing. Do the hard part first. I love a pretty flourish. This will be so pretty. And I want to make sure I have enough white on it because I might have to go over it a couple times. Because um, I want it to be white, white over, over top of this. Kind of a dingy um, old vintage hymnal and grab some more of that, that white and keep a pouncing careful so you don't go over the edge you want to make sure like that okay here is the ta-da moment ta-da oh that is pretty that is pretty Gold would have been nice, probably would have shown up more, but I think that's kind of pretty. What do you guys think? Can you see it? Can you see it? Maybe I could go over it with um, with gold. I could go over it with a, um, my gold pen once it dries and add some gold, gold highlights to it. That would be pretty, would it not? Um, what would happen if I did this? If I turned this upside down, or should I just keep going with it the way the way it goes? I'm thinking. I'm thinking. I'm gonna go with it this way. It's supposed to go this way, and use what's left. Bring it over to the side as far as I can, like that. Hold it down. And get my brush all goobered up. Lay it down flat. Make sure it's flat. It's important in there and start to pounce. did it. Okay, I think it needs 
some other color with it. I think it does need the gold. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dry this up. I like it with a little bit of texture over it. That actually looks like texture, um, textured paste over top of the the um, the hymnal and over the rose and all of that. So kind of liking that. If I can semi line it up, but not really line it up, kind of like off center, I probably could do the gold, rub some gold in that and make it look pretty. Make it pop. Or I could go over it with that pen. I don't think that would be pretty too. And you can do the opposite. You can put the stencil down first and then do the rose over top of that, any which way you want. Whatever works for you. This doesn't take long to dry because it was um, stenciled and it doesn't, stenciling doesn't take long to dry. So um, let me see, what do I wanna do here? I'm gonna take some of this rose gold paste. Just experimenting, folks. Just experimenting. That's what we do. That's how we learn. Uh, got the wrong brush here. This is the one I want. The little baby, the little baby baby brush. Oh, thank you so much, you guys. Thank you, Judy and sweet Sybil. Okay, I'm just cleaning this up. I um, stenciled this uh, a gold paste earlier when I was doing doing a different page to show you a different rose, just some different ideas. But I wanted to start simple with you guys, just keep it simple. I don't, want to, I don't want to scare you off. I want you to be able to say, hey, you know what? I can draw an oval and I can draw, you know, a teardrop and I can draw a half circle and another half circle and another half circle. I can do this. You know, just watch me do it side by side. Stop the video. You'll get it. It's not hard, really. You can do this. I know you can. Okay, I'm going to get my my brush all goobered up here. You know what? I think I might actually need another plate. Just a second here. Another plate. Cause you know, wax on, wax off. Daniel son, like that. Okay, bring this back. See what happens if we line it up the way it was, was earlier. I could get in there with a little bit of extra color. Start in here. Start pouncing in here. Yeah, as we can. Pouncing and I can swirl because this is paste. If it's paint, I don't like to swirl. But I can, I do like paste because it doesn't, it doesn't bleed. See what that did if anything did it bring it out or did it make it worse <laughs> at the party I'm gonna put a little bit more oops it's moving well we don't want to put any more then we're gonna leave it oh it kind of gave it like almost like it um like I glittered it almost like I glittered it that's pretty I like that all right let's just lay this one on top and glitter this one let's see if I can find the pattern where I did it. Where are you? Where are you, pattern? There you are. Mm -hmm. Right there. Okay, let's try this. You know why? You know why it's looking like it's uh, glittered is because the top of this stencil was still wet with the white and it probably mixed with it. So it looks like glitter paint. That's what it looks like. Glitter paint. Glitter paint. Yeah, it looks like glitter. It looks literally like I like I just glittered it. That's what it looks like. Um, probably would have been best to do the, the wax paste to begin with, but hey, you know what? And I can go wait till this completely dries, go over it tomorrow, and I can either re-glue re, um, 
do the stencil uh, or do another one next to it and kind of vine it through. Or I could take this pen, this paint pen, I do my paint pen, and I could use that. I could take the paint pen and just go in and give it some little highlights like I did the rose, and it'd be beautiful, right? So anyway, guys, um, I just want to show you. Um, ah, thank you so much, Karen. You're so sweet. I love that. I love that you think I am because I always wanted to be a teacher and never did. I never did do that, but I always wanted to be one. <laughs> so I guess now I kind of am living, living out my, my fulfilling my dream here. Let's see if I can switch all back now. Here, here's the where the magic really happens. <laughs> See if I can really do this. Oh my gosh. Oh my goodness. All right. So there we go. There is our art journal. Isn't that cool? So we've got all these pages we can fill. I, we can fill with all kinds of art that we can, all little tiny things that we can draw, doodle art or um, um, just, you know, I, I'm going to come up with some different things here and there that we can do this. If this is something that you think you would be interested in doing, you can get yourself a little artist sketchbook. It doesn't have to be this. Does I just happen to have this, and I thought, boy, this uh, this is just a um, you know a uh, a calendar that you know a planner, and I ha took all the artwork out of it, and I said, why throw it away? These are it's all bound up, and I can do an art journal, and we can practice our art in and um in the journal. So, and look back at it and see how far we've come. Won't that be fun? Great inspiration. Thank you so much. So there you go, go guys. That's, um, that's our, our, um, artwork for the evening. Um, let me show you what I did earlier today. Um, when I was playing around uh, I better keep it, keep it a little more, more on the simple side, but what I did, what I did was I took this, um, <laughs> this stencil that I got from Amazon it's a little stencil, and I and I used the gold, antique gold paste wax, and um, I laid that down first. Well, first I painted it because it was a calendar page, and then I laid down the gold, antique gold, and then I um, drew this rose and kind of elaborated on it, and kind of did the same thing that I did with the um, the gold pen and when it went over it with the gold pen and accentuated it. So it's a just, it's a little bit of a spin on what we did tonight, right? Just this is a little bit more complicated because it's got some shading and stuff like that. But, um, you know, you can see it's kind of, kind of the same concept, right? So just a different rose, that's all. A little simpler. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this, you guys. I hope that um, you're going to give it a try, and I hope that you will share in the um, Bellina Gallery Friends. If you do try, I would love to see what you come up, come up with. If you don't have a journal, do it on a piece of paper, put it in a notebook. Who cares? Do it on a notebook. Just take that notebook and get rid of them lines with some paint and paint over it. There you go, right? And there you have it. So anyway, hey, you guys, I probably am not going to see you. I don't think I'll see you until Monday night. I'm totally dazzled at 6 o'clock. Oh, Phoebe, go back and watch. Please go back and watch. I think you'll be inspired because it's a, it's a real simple drawing. I'll show you step by step how I drew this little simple rose. And it's very simple, just shapes. No hard stuff. I promise you. Anyway, uh... Thank you so much, Anna. I feel better already. You all make me feel better. You know what? That is the test of a good friend. You guys are good friends because when I walk away, I always feel better. So you guys, you guys are good medicine for me, right? Y'all have a blessed night. Um, I will see you Monday night, most likely not before that, but um, uh, I will see you Monday at six o'clock for Totally Dazzled, okay? Love you all. Bye, guys.